Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, Ivy Crazy. I'm Mark Ashton, M. Ashton1138. You might have seen some of the earlier videos with us testing a Connects Pro site. The first one where we went 4.1 kilometers, and the other one where we tried to punch a signal through a house, trees, and hills. Well, we're going to combine those two videos, and we're going to compare our panel ray that previously got us 4.1 kilometers to our secret sauce antenna that was able to punch through houses and hills. We're going to make a range test with this one, same test as last time, and see how our new secret sauce system compares to our panel array. Let's we'll see if we can beat that 4.1 kilometer record. Either way, I think uh, we're set to be impressed. Yeah, so far so good with this thing. And as you can see, we're just doing this with uh, Big Bird here. I don't have my specter because, well... What's the point? Yeah, exactly. What's the <laughs> point? So with that, let's, let's fly this. Going. All right, throttle and ready. <laughs> Gosh, that thing's got power. Ooh, big crosswind. Pixelating. All right, I'm at 400 feet. I'm going to climb out. Yeah, your air traffic is clear to climb. There is nothing oh, I, up there. Yeah, I'm, I know. I looked at everything today. Oh, yeah. It's 600. Still pixelating, but holding. We're at 1.1. One, 1.1? One. 1. 1? Yeah. I think, honestly, what the issue is, I think it's the location of the antennas on the aircraft. I think we can do a little better. Yep. And, and that, it just dropped out completely. All right, that's at 1.3. Let's yeah. bring her back in. Let's change over to the uh, the panel array. And then the last thing is to change to the pro array. And it's back. Uh, 1.4, and it came back? 1. Yeah. Huh. So we've... It's the antenna location. So we've got some signal blockage. Yeah, um, we definitely have some signal blockage on the antenna. That's hard to go from. Okay, so we just got back from our first flight to 2.25 kilometers on our secret sauce antenna, and as you can see, we changed back over to our panel array, which previously got 4.1. We need to be sure that we're able to get that far or further, hopefully, uh, with this one, just to make sure that the baseline was accurate. Now, Mark had said yesterday he was banking on about the same range at 4.1 kilometers, and I said about three kilometers on the, on the secret sauce. So uh, Mark here was banking on uh, you know, multipath fading uh, being the reason the uh, signal went out, and I was banking on it being noise floor. So far, or, or well, maybe not noise floor, but just receiver sensitivity. Uh, but so far, it seems like receiver sensitivity seems to be what take, took it out. But uh, this flight will tell. This well, flight will tell. Yeah. yeah, yeah, this is good stuff. All right, let's get it in here. I'm going to speed up the footage in this section because it was a long flight out and, well, quite uneventful. But I want you to look in the upper right hand corner of the screen. We're still in HQ mode and we're showing three bars, our full signal strength. Occasionally it drops down a little bit, but then it comes right back. This is pretty impressive because on our first trip out, this point here, we were already showing red one bar and we're fluctuating between two and three. And that's pretty impressive for 400 feet up. Okay, so this is where the uh, secret sauce, secret sauce the punch antenna went to. Yeah. One five. Still looking good. One six. Still looking good. Still looking good on HD. I mean, real good. 
Starting to get a little pixelation, but not bad. One eight, one nine. Yeah, okay. We're still at 400 feet? Still at 400, yeah. How's your RSSI on your radio look? 50%. We're okay, good. okay, yeah, you're okay. Logarithmic scale. Okay, I'm gonna come up a little bit though, because it's starting to drop down into the 30s. Yeah, okay. Two miles. Two miles, okay. 500 feet. Yeah. Yeah, watch your control RSSI here. Yeah, I'm watching. <laughs> Yeah, your video, uh, dude, it's not even, it's ba you can barely see pixelation. It's 100% flyable still. 2-2. Two, 2-3. Two. Two, well, I think we're going to break that 4.1. <laughs> we are too. Because <laughs> I'm not seeing any indication of it giving up. There's 2-4. Well, that's our previous. Right there, Pat <coughs> Crossing previous. Okay, it's starting to pixelate. It's saying I want to give up, but it's still flyable. Two, five. Holy shit, it's still going. And it's out. Two six. Two six. Up, oh, still going. I came back, came back, Coming came back. Coming up a little bit. Yeah, climb a little bit. I'm at 650. Two seven. Still going. Climb a little bit more. Two eight. See if we can get three miles out of it. Climb a little more. You climbing? Yeah, I can see you're trying a little bit. Whoa, 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 whoa. where are you going here? I don't know what it's doing. What is this thing doing? I don't know. I'm at two eight and just holding. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's it doing? I have no idea. It's diving. Oh, my battery's going on in here. Let's come back. Hey, come back, come back. Bring it back. I don't need to return it. I pilot it back. I've got plenty of freaking power. Yeah. I just fly it back. It's not coming back. At this point in the flight, Mark and I are trying to figure out what happened with the airplane. It appears we have some sort of autopilot failure, considering that occasionally the motor turns on and then it won't respond. And now the elevator doesn't seem to have any response at all. So right now we're trying to figure out whether or not we try to fly it back or just ditch it into one of these open fields. We're two and a half miles away and Mark's RSSI for his control is still showing good control, yet the plane is only responding right now to aileron only. At this point, Mark decides he's going to ditch the plane. He's chosen the field on the left, but what you can't see is that the topography of the field actually is a downhill and that's going to be a problem. Mark struggles to straighten out his airplane and aim for what he thinks is the base of the tree line, but it's not. Six days worth of searching later, we found the plane here. Because of the steep pitch of the hill in the field, the plane glided well past our intended landing spot and ended up in a tree about 125 feet up. We sent a quadcopter up in the air to go see how far away the plane was and how difficult it was going to be to retrieve it. You can see as I fly over top of these trees that, well, yeah, that hill continues and then there's a ravine down there. Fortunately, the hill looks navigable and it appears the airplane isn't lodged too deeply into that tree. Of course, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easy to get out but at least we have a chance of getting it. We decided to fly above the tree to see if there was a chance of dropping something down and possibly hooking the airplane and lifting it out. But seeing the tree cover, well, there was no chance of that happening. Time to get creative. So what did we use to get the plane back? Well, if you guessed crossbow, you guessed right. Except this little dinky thing, well, it's recovered several of my airplanes in the past, but 75 feet up is about its upper limit. We were shooting about 10 feet short of the plane every time. After all, it's only a little dinky pistol crossbow with a fishing reel and some 20 pound line on it. It works great, but that one was way up there. So what'd we do? We went down to the local archery shop and picked up this guy. A real crossbow, 150 pound draw. We simply unscrewed the tip of the, of the bolt that came with it and put a regular threaded bolt on it and some 30 pound fishing line. Yeah, that was a mistake. 30 pound fishing line and 150 pound crossbow, yeah, they don't mix and the line snaps.
So we went back down to the archery shop, which also oddly sold fishing supplies and picked up this 80 pound line, which was more than enough to take the force of this bolt coming off the crossbow with 150 pound draw. You can see here what we did, we replaced the tip with a regular bolt and a bunch of nuts for weight. The reason for that was this is really stiff line and these bolts are really, really light. So we needed some added weight to get this bolt up through the trees and into the airplane. And well, after switching to this, it took us about six shots and we got the plane back just before a hailstorm hit. Otherwise, we would have recorded the recovery, but yeah, we got caught in a hailstorm. So yeah, that's not part of this video, unfortunately. But the good news is we got the plane home. I might be crazy and keep them flying.